Nearly seven feet stood Kerchak on his short legs. His enormous shoulders were bunched and rounded with huge muscles. The back of his short neck was as a single lump of iron sinew, which bulged beyond the base of his skull, so that his head seemed like a small ball protruding from a huge mountain of flesh. His back-drawn, snarling lips exposed his great fighting fangs, and his little wicked bloodshot eyes gleamed in horrid reflection of his madness. Awaiting him stood Tarzan, himself a mighty muscled animal, but his six feet of height and his great rolling sinews seemed pitifully inadequate to the ordeal which awaited them. His bow and arrows lay some distance away, where he had dropped them while showing Sabor's hide to his fellow apes, so that he confronted Kerchak now with only his hunting knife and his superior intellect to offset the ferocious strength of his enemy. As his antagonist came roaring toward him, Lord Greystoke tore his long knife from its sheath, and with an answering challenge as horrid and blood-curdling as that of the beast he faced, rushed swiftly to meet the attack. He was too shrewd to allow those long, hairy arms to encircle him. And just as their bodies were about to crash together, Tarzan of the apes grasped one of the huge wrists of his assailant and, springing lightly to one side, drove his knife to the hilt into Kerchak's body below the heart. Before he could wrench the blade free again, the bull's quick lunge to seize him in those awful arms had torn the weapon from Tarzan's grasp. Kerchak aimed a terrific blow at the ape man's head with the flat of his hand, a blow which, had it landed, might easily have crushed in the side of Tarzan's skull. The man was too quick and, ducking beneath it, himself delivered a mighty one with clenched fist in the pit of Kerchak's stomach. The ape was staggered, and what with the mortal wound in his side had almost collapsed when, with one mighty effort, he rallied for an instant, just long enough to enable him to wrest his arm free from Tarzan's grasp and close in a terrific clinch with his wiry opponent. Straining the ape-man close to him, his great jaws sought Tarzan's throat. But the young lord's sinewy fingers were at Kerchak's own before the cruel fangs could close on the sleek brown skin. Thus they struggled, the one to crush out his opponent's life with those awful teeth, the other to close forever the windpipe beneath his strong grasp, the while he held the snarling mouth from him. The greater strength of the ape was slowly prevailing, and the teeth of the straining beast were scarce an inch from Tarzan's throat when, with a shuddering tremor, the great body stiffened for an instant and then sank limply to the ground. Kerchak was dead. Withdrawing the knife that had so often rendered him master of far mightier muscles than his own, Tarzan of the apes placed his foot upon the neck of his vanquished enemy, and once again, loud through the forest rang the fierce wild cry of the conqueror. And thus came the young Lord Greystoke into the kingship of the apes. That, my friends, was from Tarzan. Of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is your Sunday Penguin for today. Yes, my friends, Tarzan of the Apes, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today's Sunday Penguin, which is Tarzan of the Apes, which was uh, published in 1914. This was actually the third book that Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote. Uh, he wrote this after he, re he wrote uh, A Princess of Mars, his first book, which I talked about last week. And his second book, which was The Outlaw of Torn, which was an historical novel that wasn't uh, published in book form until much later, actually. At that point, everything this guy wrote was gold, and they would publish anything this guy wrote. 
because Edgar Rice Burroughs became a tremendous success. Uh, a Princess of Mars uh, was a success. It was a popular story, but this, this was crazy popular, Tarzan of the Apes. So when Tarzan wrote this, he still wasn't a big success as a writer, but this made him Tarzan of the Apes. Uh, it was so popular that even now, everybody knows who Tarzan is. Uh, he wrote, I think, off the top of my head, I'm going to say he wrote 23 or 24 Tarzan books. For some reason, I can't remember. I read them all, but I can't remember the number at the moment. Counting, it's hard. So I think it was 23 or 24 Tarzan books. Uh, they've made, Hollywood has made like a gazillion movies off of Tarzan. Uh, not many of them have been very good, frankly. Just about all of them get Tarzan wrong. Here's the thing about Tarzan. Tarzan was actually a really intelligent guy. So in this novel, Lord and Lady Greystoke are marooned on the coast of the jungles of Africa. Uh, they survive for a while. Uh, Tarzan is born there in the jungles of Africa. About a year after he was born, his mother dies. And uh, his father was killed shortly after by apes. So I guess gave you a bunch of spoilers, but you know he ends up in the jungle somehow. So there you go. But the ape Kala, who had recently lost her own baby, sees the baby Tarzan in the crib in the cabin that his father had built. So she takes Tarzan, when he's just a one-year-old little baby, and she raises him as a member of the tribe. Now, he's very different, of course, and uh, they are all bewildered by his differences. Why does it take so long for this kid to grow up anyway? Uh, and they name him Tarzan, which in ape language <laughs> is uh, white skin because it's, he's this hairless white thing. Uh, little freak Tarzan is, uh, but he actually has a really fun childhood, and uh, it's full of adventure and thrills. Some of his uh, childhood moments are the most exciting bits in this book. This whole book is really actually a lot better than you would think it would be, especially if you've only read the, or, or have only seen the Tarzan movies. I don't know if anyone actually watches the Tarzan movies anymore. Uh, there was a time when those Tarzan movies, I think one came out every year for, for a long time. There are so many Tarzan movies and so many of them are pretty bad. Uh, in the book, Tarzan eventually uh, finds his father's cabin and in the cabin there are a bunch of books and he actually teaches himself to read even though he doesn't know the English language. But he teaches himself to read uh, by a child dictionary that has uh, letters with pictures by them and he kind of interprets that and it's an interesting little bit and he does this because Tarzan is a really really smart guy eventually he runs into other human beings some native Africans are driven into his part of the jungle uh, uh, after being uh, driven out by white people that part seems realistic and so they're driven into his part of the his part of the jungle and so he encounters them and one of the natives actually kills his mother uh, a hunter kills his mother and he has to go get revenge which he does uh, but that's his first contact with human beings eventually uh some europeans some british and americans uh show up and jane is with that party and that is when he meets jane and uh, coincident coincidentally, one of his relatives is in this party. It's coincidence pop rears up now and again in Edgar Rice Burroughs' books. Once in a while, you'll come across a coincidence. Uh, it's an entertaining book. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. I'm reading every book by Edgar Rice Burroughs. I'm doing the great Edgar Rice Burroughs reread because I've read all of these. I've read all of Edgar Rice Burroughs books when I was in my late teens and early 20s. And I wanted to read them once again as an old guy. So I'm doing that now as an old guy. And I last 
last uh, month I read A Princess of Mars and this one. This upcoming month I'm reading Return of Tarzan, which I remember as being my favorite Tarzan book, and The Gods of Mars, which I remember as being my favorite Mars book, so that'll be fun. But this one is awful good. Now this was written in 1914. Uh, so you get some stereotyped, uh, you get a lot of stereotypes in this book in regards to Native Africans and even um, the one uh, black American who is in this book, Esmeralda. Yeah, you, you have to deal with that. Um, they are certainly a product of their time. I actually found a little bit in this book. This is Edgar Rice Burroughs' Master of Adventure, written by Richard A. Lupoff. This is a book uh, about Edgar Rice Burroughs' books. And he has this to say on the subject of that. And I found it interesting. This was written in the 60s. I think it was 64. The question of racism in Burroughs is one which has been raised repeatedly and substantial evidence can be produced either to damn Burroughs or to save him. It must be realized that at the start of his career, the stereotypes was the stereotype. Wait, I lost myself. See, I'm not reading. I'm not, I don't have my glasses on and this is tiny print. So let me read that part again. It must be realized that at the start of his career, the stigmatization of racial and religious and even of national stereotypes was standard practice in popular literature, both in the pulp magazine for which Burroughs initially wrote and in the book field, which he later attained. As a beginner, especially a beginner out to make a living rather than uh, express any particular creative urge, Burroughs would naturally, whether consciously or not, follow the leading writers of the day. And in the leading works of, the, of that day, natives of virtually any sort were treated as stupid, but sly, superstitious, filthy, lustful, greedy, and so on, for a long list of pejoratives. Similarly, Jews were cheap, greedy, sly, treacherous. Irish were ruddy, jolly, stupid, perhaps, but good-natured uh, and willing. English were noble, courageous, intelligent, in short, paragons of virtue, unless they were of a certain element of the upper crust, not the true blue Claytons, though, who were foppish, sissified, timid, and so on. Certainly, Burroughs used stereotyped characterizations in Tarzan of the Apes and several other Tarzan books. He portrayed Africans according to the accepted stereotypes. He also portrayed American Negroes in the unfortunate comic darky vein in Tarzan of the Apes and several of the other novels. But Burroughs also portrayed Negroes as heroic figures in many of the Tarzan novels, notably those featuring the Waziri, with whom Tarzan lived at one of time as an adopted brother and even chieftain. There was also the Ethiopian Empire of Beyond 30, portrayed with considerable respect and even a degree of admiration, even though Jefferson Turk, the hero of that novel, sides against this empire, preferring the ra rationalistic philosophy of the competing Chinese empire to the Christian outlook of the Ethiopians. And it goes on a bit, but you get what he's saying, and this is back in the mid-60s. And that is pretty much true. Back in 1914, certainly stigmatizations and stereotypes were pretty common. And so you're gonna get that when you read Tarzan. But if you can look beyond that, it's a pretty good adventure story. Actually, it's really, really good. Every time I read this, I've read this a few times in my life and I'm always surprised by how good it is for some reason. So yeah, Tarzan of the Apes, it is a classic. It is a Penguin classic. I kind of think a lot more Burroughs books should be considered classics because I think that they are. They certainly are influential. And Tarzan, he had a million imitators for a while. Not so much nowadays. Uh, he, is not, he is not as well known as he used to be. I, I suspect most people know him now as the Disney cartoon that came out in the 90s. Um, boy, is this a lot different than that. 
a lot of buckets of blood are spilled. This is kind of a violent book. Most of Burroughs' books are pretty violent and savage. And that's part of the fun. So, yeah, Tarzan of the Apes. I recommend it. So that's my Sunday Penguin for this week. Uh, hopefully I'll get up my Mythos Monday tomorrow. Uh, I'll have to figure out when I'm going to film that with people pounding on the, on the manor back there doing construction. My, my filming time is a little off, as you might have noticed. But thanks for joining me once again here at Stately Fun Manor, and I will catch you next time.